Hey, it's Mazzy. Welcome back. A warning. I'm showing 11 political albums. So if you don't like politics mixed with your music, go listen to another channel. Go listen to uh, The Ingroove. Go buy some records. Support local outlets, record stores. Support small business, I say. I support small business. I was a small business myself for 38 years. I'm going to show 11 political albums. I have a vast collection. To me, politics and music mix wonderfully. Look at Sympathy for the Devil. Look at Street Fighting Man. Look at Revolution. Look at the times they are a-changing. Look at People Have the Power. Look at so many records. What's going on? So many great records were political and have and share uh, political feelings. And I urge you all to vote. I'm not going to tell you to vote for. Obviously, you know who I'm voting for or already voted for. But vote. Everyone in America should vote. Who has the opportunity to vote and um, legally. And I'm a support of legal voting. So please vote and um, vote who you think is the best candidate. I'll just go through these albums. They're not all political in every track. And some artists have political songs that are probably deeper politically on other albums. But I'm going to start out with uh, The Dream of Life by Patti Smith. Of course, right off the bat, people have the power. I know uh, I think Michael Stipe covered that for a presidential election some years ago. But it's just a great, uh, great record. Uh, on, again, uh, Arista Records, this is... Uh, I think in, in a way this is not a comeback, but she took a little hiatus up until this record. But I adore this record. Paths That Cross, Dream of Life, of course, uh, Where Duty Calls. So you get into different levels of political things. Political can be in your neighborhood. Political can be uh, wars and anti-wars. Politics can be sexual politics and personal politics and freedom and choices. Uh, but uh, I love this record. I'm a big fan of Patti Smith. I've seen her maybe seven, eight times over the years. A great artist from the punk scene. Uh, in a way, this record tend to be more like album-oriented friendly, less punky, but still, she has this great, great sound along this album. Um, God, I love this record. I like all her records. I don't think she's ever made a bad record. Next, we have one. I believe this was uh, 2012 this came out. Uh, so this came out just prior to Obama running against Romney for Obama's second term. And this is Ry Cooter's election special. I saw him around the time. Ry Cooter, his son Joaquin Cooter, and um, another bass player, I believe it was, uh, played a union hall right by the San Francisco Giants Stadium on the Bay, a union hall, and played a benefit for this union hall. Folding chairs, Maybe a hundred people there. I got to meet uh, Ry Cooter and Joaquin at the time, but this is a great record. And like a Randy Newman, he has this kind of wry sense of humor. He's covered, you know, working songs of uh, political songs, of folk songs over the years, blues songs, and uh, this is a bunch of originals. Opening up with Mutt Romney's Blues, Brother Is Gone, The Wall Street Part of Town. We learned what happened when. Obama first came in office in 2008. There's that massive banking crisis, and uh, uh, Obama got elected that year and uh, turned it around. With help on the left and the right, Republicans, Democrats finally put it together, but Obama led that uh, rebuilding. The, the bad thing is not one banker went to jail. Not one, you know, the people that go to jail are sometimes the wrong people, but the rich, the powerful rarely get you know, busted for the shit they did. And what an atrocious thing that happened in that banking crisis. People lost their homes. People lost their uh, fortunes, their their savings. It was a bad time. Song in here called Guant Guantanamo. Uh, either party haven't handled that right. So I'm not just all in uh, for the Democrats all the time. When they make mistakes, I will criticize, definitely. I'm not one of these people that goes for the false idol and follows that person just because he's in like the second coming or whatever you call him. But this is a great album, uh, Ry Cooter's Election Special 2012. Then we have not the obvious choice for Randy Newman. I, you know, Political Science is a great song uh, on um, one of my favorite Randy Newman albums. And he's he, Randy Newman writes with this wry 
sense of humor that is so incredible. He's a great writer, a great composer, and this is not necessarily one of his better albums even. And this came out in 2017 on None Such Records. Uh, this is Renny Newman's Dark Matter, obviously a um, the perfect for where we are in the world in a way, uh, depending on your point of view. Uh, the Great Debate is sort of a um, a wonderful, somewhat um, problematic, elongated piece, almost like a theatrical uh, rock opera, if you will, or in a way. And it's a story. It tells about this, literally a political debate. Uh, and he writes from the third person a lot, or the first person, depending. A great songwriter, great lyricist, again, wry sense of humor. Uh, but the song that he had recorded earlier uh, here is Putin, and Putin put his, puts his pants on, basically. Hilarious song. Love this song. Um, but it's it's this album is a grower. Again, not one of his best. I keep thinking of that song he did about the Supreme Court. Uh, what album was that on? He did it on his uh, solo piano record, A Word for Our Country. Hil hysterical song. Uh, but Randy Newman, very high on my uh, list of artists and American songwriters and, and a somewhat obviously uh, political, directly political album. Of course, one of John Lennon's most problematic albums and is overtly political from 1972, uh, John and Yoko, Sometime in New York City. Every image is political from Chairman Mao and uh, Richard Nixon to Sisters of Sisters, Woman is the of the world, Angela, about Angela Davis, the Black Power Movement. Um, I don't like the Elephant's Memory Band. I can't wait. I hope Sean does a remaster that, strips it back, gets rid of that crappy Elephant Memory Band. But there's some great songs on here. Uh, Luck of the Irish, Attica State, John Sinclair, that great kind of slide bottle, uh, guitar, bottleneck guitar that John plays on that. I just love that song. Uh, Sunday Bloody Sunday, you know about that, what that's about. Uh, but this is a problematic but courageous record, in-your-face record, uh, not totally successful, but it has its moments, and it's obviously the whole layout of a, a newspaper, very much like the New York Times uh, of the day. So... John Lennon and Yoko Ono, sometime in New York City. Then we got the debut album, as I recall, from 1979, Entertainment by the Gang of Four. What a powerful album. Basically, in the punk scene, I would consider it more post-punk, but right in that margin, right, 1979. I keep thinking post-punk starting in 1980, but everything's a crossover, and it's all punk, whatever it is. Great bass, great kind of upbeat in your face dance thing. I mean, some of the lyrics and some of the facts in here, the facts are presented neutrally so that the public can make up its own mind. The police have impartial to defend the rights of the minority group. The deceased organ is removed and a healthy one substituted. I mean, this is a political in your face uh, kind of masterpiece uh, with a funk dance punk thing happening. in the gang of four entertainment from 1979 and then of course how can i do anything about protests again i'm missing so many in my collection we insist i don't have any jazz records here nina simone aretha franklin even she didn't really write but um i kind of stuck on that but the times they are changing obviously dylan's first earliest albums are very political and he kind of waned back and he would do topical songs over the years uh, like Hurricane, Hurricane Carter, uh, Joker Man about, you know, social political situations, um, Neighborhood Bully about Israel. Uh, but the times they are changing, Bob Dylan, that song alone, the death of Hattie Carroll, more of a, obviously, uh, the civil rights movement, uh, in the South, Restless Farewell, God on Our Side, Only a Pawn on Their Game. Just a great, great song of Hollis Brown. I mean, one of the great Bob Dylan albums of all time. Probably his most political, overtly political album. But obviously being, a, you know, the folk singer of the time, of the 1960s Greenwich Village scene. Uh, so important. And obviously being influenced by Woody Guthrie and just writing about American things that are happening socially as well. Now, of course, there's a riot go on 
going on by Sly Stone, Sly and the Family Stone. This is the one, his most political. Uh, Sly Stone, you know, dipped his foot quite a bit in politics and uh, social injustice and racial issues here. Um, but this album has quite tracks. Even the fun, long, was it 15 minute song, uh, Sex Machine, it's not as political, but it just got this funky, ongoing Wawa uh, type situation. But um, Love and Hate, spelled like Hate Street here. Family Affair, of course. Africa Talks to You. The Asphalt Jungle, There's a Riot Going On. Uh, and many other songs. But what a fantastic album. A very important album uh, in Sly's career, in American music career. Uh, what a great, great record. There's a riot going on. Then I couldn't show politics and talk politics without talking about Bruce Springsteen. Now, he's made many political statements, and I just saw, obviously, he supported one of the two candidates for president. And people get so butthurt when an artist supports the candidate that's not theirs. Have you noticed that? You know, I'm not butthurt that Hulk, Hulk Hogan is supporting one of the candidates. I don't care. I don't care if um, Lee Greenwood is supporting a candidate. I don't care if, um, well, I don't care if anyone, everyone has a right to support who they want. If, if they're famous, if they're a big rock star, if they're a music star, if they're a movie star, they're a person too. Do they have influence? Who knows if it takes one vote here, one vote there. They do it on all the sides. So it's not just an a issue for the left or an issue for the right. But Bruce Springsteen's The Rising. He's done many political things. This is a reaction record uh, after 9-11 in uh, what happened in, obviously, New York City and the Twin Towers and the Pentagon, uh, that whole thing. And it gets into what was going on. Think about it at that time. After that, the unsung heroes of the of fire people that marched up, that went up there, many were dead, many other people were killed uh, for years later, firemen inhaling things, and um, that's an unfortunate thing when the government and, and the unions don't always support those firemen. There's a tug of war there of cancer after that horrible situation. Uh, but Springsteen, you know, had a right about this whole situation here. The rising... Uh, Lonesome Day, Into the Fire, Waiting on a Sunny Day, Nothing Man, Counting on a Miracle, Empty Sky, Worlds Apart, goes on and on and on. You know, he's been uh, a political hotbed of uh, energy for a long time. And whenever something, he comes out and states it. And obviously, not all Bruce Springsteen fans are going to follow his politics. But I love when an artist puts themselves out there. Sometimes they, get, they turn people off. Sometimes they gain new audiences. But it's their right to include music and to write music that's about topical issues. And then there's the guy who was the mayor of America. The most popular politician after this was Rudy Giuliani, and how he got up there and how he spoke after this tragic event in Manhattan in New York City. And now look at him. He's just a, a shell of what he was. was. He degraded uh, women. He lied about election fraud. And um, it's just, you know, he's getting what he deserves, but it's so sad. He went from being so up there and just a great uh, persona, great person at this time leading uh, New York, having New York come back from the ashes, literally. And uh, just kind of just, what an amazing story. I mean, sad story to boot. Obviously, there's a lot of punk bands that you could showcase uh, politically. Uh, this is the UK edition the of uh, the debut Clash album. Of course, with remote control, I'm so bored with the USA. Hate and war, white riot, London's burning. What a time in England, kind of a tempestuous time there. Uh, not so much in America right then, but, you know, we obviously have our shit going on now, and we've had it going on before. Career opportunities, police and thieves, 48 hours, Garage Land, uh, and others. Uh, one of the greatest bands, the only band that matters, remember that thing? Uh, my favorite worldwide punk band, uh, The Clash, and uh, just love this record. UK copy, there you go. 
And we got, of course, what's going on, Marvin Gaye, about the civil rights issues. Uh, this is a beautiful album. It's a an emotional album, and it's it's just it's something so different than what artists were doing on Motown Records. And uh, Barry, Barry Gordy, who uh, you know ran Motown and Tamil Records, wasn't quite sure that artists like Marvin Gaye should do this or Stevie Wonder should do this really creative thing. You know, in the '60s, for the most part, they have groups of writers, including Marvin Gaye. He would do his pop hits with pop rock soul hits, Motown hits, we know them as, uh, with Tammy Terrell and others, uh, and great records, great, just soul top 40 records and a great series. And all of a sudden, you know, the 70s into the 70s, artists like Marvin Gaye and Stevie Wonder and many soul artists as well as rock artists really started writing about things that mattered. I mean, you know, even on the other side, you think of uh, Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, they got very political. Think of Chicago by um, Graham Nash. Think of Ohio by Neil Young. I support artists who speak up to and just and write what they feel and write what they, they want to say. Now, it sometimes it does put them on the spot and it can put a ding in their career from some of their audiences, but I just admire an artist who does it. And this is a, a perfect album. This is a groundbreaking album. Of course, What's Happening, Brother, What's Going On, Save the Children, God is Love, Mercy, 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 probably one of the first artists, uh, you know, in, from the African-American community that really started talking about the environment and ecology. Uh, but what a, a wonderful, wonderful record here. And lastly, but not leastly, he's dipped his foot, an entire foot, his entire body in politics, and that is Neil Young. And I wouldn't say necessarily this is his most uh, political album. I mean, going back to Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, he's done it. Uh, this is Freedom. Again, uh, this is an album that kind of resuscitated his career after a, a lost decade in the 80s uh, at Geffen Records doing like crap stuff. But uh, this is a, a wonderful, wonderful record. Of course, you also have on here Rockin' in the Free World, which I believe he just allowed Tim Walls to use. He's not always uh, allowing politicians to use his songs, but he granted it. So he believes, I guess, in Tim Walls. Don't Cry, Hanging on a Limb, El Dorado, uh, Wrecking Ball, Neil Young, Freedom. Please vote, everyone. And thanks for watching. Even if you don't agree with me politically, this is great music. And, you know, you use it, whatever. And and interpret it however you want to interpret it. it. May not be what the artist has in mind, but maybe that's okay. I'm not sure. So thanks for watching. Mazzy loves you. We'll see you next time.